Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Rock and Beards podcast. This, Current, this currently, is, it's episode, it's episode 40. 40. Shut up, Sid. <laughs> uh, my name is HSR. What's up? It's Sid. All right. Before we go and talk about what we're here to talk about, I'm going to bore you for a couple of minutes for those who've been coming here for a while, for you newcomers. We got it. In the, the description below, contest. you can like skip ahead and see like the whole episode itinerary and jump to what you want. But yes, we have a contest, the Grand of 1,000 Subscribers Contest. And the whole point of this is to get to 1,000 subscribers, preferably before the new year, but realistically as soon as possible. When we achieve this goal, what will happen is you are going to win some Amazon money because it's the easiest way to send you money. And uh, basically, you will uh, have to subscribe to the channel, you will have to like the video, and you will have to leave a comment about either this particular review or the album in general. And for every video you like and comment, you get a entry into the raffle of sorts. Then once we hit a thousand, we gonna pick some people out of this based on, you know, how many times you enter, blah, 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 randomize that shit, boom, pick some names. Then first place gets $100 plus the right to request a specific piece of content, like an album or a movie or some shit, and we'll review it. Uh, you get to even pick who does the review. And then second place gets $50 plus the request. Third place gets 25 And yeah, if you're in the States, we'll do it in USD because us Canadians ain't that cheap. Is what I'm trying to say. I Not that we're saying that Americans are cheap. We no, no, no. Cheap. We're trying to say that we recognize our dollar value difference and we'll accommodate. Also for people in China. Yeah, sure. Anyway, wherever you are, we'll work it out to being around the USD equivalent of your currency. So Canadians, guess what? It'll be more for you. Um, at the end of the day, uh, we appreciate you guys and your opinions. And honestly, these comments are fucking wonderful to read and it's a delight. So we really want to turn this into a community. And this contest helps us get to that next level and gets you a chance to maybe, you know, talk about your favorite band and why you like them and all that shit. And to an audience of people who care because everyone else coming to that review is also thinking the same shit as you. On that note, for episode 40, Sydney, why don't you tell us what album we are doing? Uh, we are doing... P p p pacifisticuffs, 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 like pacifist and fisticuffs, or Fis pacific. S side note, fisticuffs, one of the best terms for a fighting style in history. I it's loved like it. This kind of, and it was like just that, and it was it was amazing. It was truly an amazing name for something. But who is it by? By the Diablo. No, not the. Just Diablo Swing Orchestra. All right. Um. So. I posted on Facebook recently that I just discovered these guys when we decided to review them. And it was like magical to me, the sound of this band. I'd never encountered it before. And then Nuclear Convoy, my favorite hater uh, of like real life people. And uh, he's like, I tried to like get you to listen to them back in the day. Bro. And I was like, bro, uh, my boy James Snellgrove, he's actually oh. done a review on the channel with us. He, uh, he was here for the Amine review. He was in town. He's from Toronto. We live in Montreal, so click there and you can catch that shit. Is that up there? Up yeah. There? Uh, it's in the corner. Yeah. Uh, where, 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 fuck, where you can see the logo and the, the fucking screen over there. Okay. On that note, uh, all I have to say, I don't have a lot of exposure to Diablo Swing Orchestra. For me, it's something I literally discovered about two weeks ago. And then I started listening to their older work because I, I've learned that you guys appreciate it more if I at least put a, some effort into hearing what was done. And this combination of swing music, orchestral sounds, and fucking awesome metal blew my fucking mind. Like, when I'm at work, I like high energy shit I can vibe to. And the, the fuck, man, it was so good. I didn't get a chance to wrap my head around much of it, but I just kind of started their albums and played through, and it was great. I showed colleagues. I was so excited. And then, you know, life went on, and I waited for this album. And that Knuckle Hug song, holy fuck have I been listening to that. It's so positive and upbeat and joyful and shit. And Spoilers, was, because that's the first song on this record. Yeah, but still, it was my exposure. Like, I was just, I just felt happy every time I put their music on. Which Are they is, music videos? No, there weren't. No, okay. I didn't see any. And if there were music videos for this album, as I just said, I didn't see any. So let us know and apologize and not our bad. Sorry. We're sorry. And um, yeah, so do you know these guys before this? No. Had no idea what to expect. You were like, we're doing Diablo Swing Orchestra. And I was like, all right, that sounds like a band. <laughs> but uh, no, they're fucking cool, man. I really dig this. This is like, I mean, this is like all the best parts of like the Cat Empire and Faith No More and like Nevermore all squished into one ridiculous package. 
So if you can picture that, the like the like crazy prog of Nevermore and the the ridiculous tongue in cheek lyrics of like of like what's his name fucking I don't remember the singer's name, and then the like weirdness of Mike Patton. And the like gypsy jazz and ska of the Cat Empire, like all fucking just here, here you go. This yeah. is I'm so mad that this album came out now because I would have put this on all my top ten lists. Yeah, we we haven't done those yet for this channel. Those might be coming. Let us know in the comments if you care what our top tens are. Um, you wanna you wanna talk about the cover and the title and all that shit and get into the review? Yeah, um, I mean I don't know. It's a very interesting cover. It looks it kind of reminds me of like. Like being a teenager and hanging out under bridges with your friends, like tagging, like because okay. that's that's kind of what I'm getting there. Like there's like a, there's like a bridge and there's a dude and there's this like prism of light. It's like a triangular prism and he's kind of like whoa, but he looks he looks like kind of a young kid. He's got like, I, I, that's just that you only see his the back of him, but he looks like he's like a youth, and in in a youthful spot. I, I don't um, know. I like the colors. Yeah, um, it's a lot I, of colors. It made me feel science fictiony, and. I was more caught up on the title, Pacifisticuffs, because it's fun. It's fun to say. It's fun to say. It, it's and, not my um, favorite title. It's a, it's a little dorky. I expected some corniness response out of you from when I saw <laughs> some of this, especially when we do get to that first song. Um, but I think it's a really good mantra for what they're about with this album. It, and it says a lot for what it is. Like, we're pacifist by nature, but we're, we're going to fight in our own way, you know? And... It's cool. It's it's fun. Like it's it's not necessarily the most unique or clever title ever, but it's a damn good summary of an album as far as titling your shit can go. Is, is how I felt after listening to the album. That's fair. I mean, it's not it's not the type the, the album title. It's like this title is gonna go down in history. You know what I mean? It's just it's it's kind of there. Like it's if it, to to me it feels like the most haphazard par- part of of this entire undertaking of this entire album of this entire project like the re- we'll get into it because the rest of it is so beautiful but well, okay so let's just do it uh knuckle hugs knuckle hugs arm yourself with love in the parentheses right yourselves with faith cuz they already I know what to expect dude like i mean this this might have been the first one i clicked on right of all of them right because it was the most recent release, and we had decided, I was looking, I was like, okay, it came out. And, you know, we more or less pick our albums as close to a release date as possible. So we're looking at shit ahead of time and often, and we're going blind. So I'll hit the play button, and you just hear this thumping, like, and you just picture the live like that, but like yeah. not in a cheesy way where it feels like they're trying to bait the experience, in a way where it just felt so organic and fun. And then they just, I'm yourselves with love. And yeah. you're just like, Wait, what what? And it sounds almost like this aggressive fucking nature, but mixed with like so like from a, a bass and percussion point of view, it's this heavy fucking feel. But then all the higher end sounds, the the melodies and stuff, it's like this joy to the world it's fucking like happiness. It's really jovial, really like and like the lyrics aren't very complex to this track, um, but it, it's straight up like arm yourself, arm yourself, everybody, like arm yourself with things like love or faith. And I was like they, they clearly have a good sense of change and, and wanting to see a different world. And it's yeah. saying, but at the same time, they're recognizing as many are that there's some kind of ideological battle that's happening right now. And they're saying, this is how we're going to fight. We're going to fight with love. And I felt like a lot of what the arcade fire. Yeah, we reviewed them. Nobody liked it. You can still check it in the corner. <laughs> um, so I felt like my biggest grievance them. with them is they were trying to be like these peaceful, fucking aggressive types. And then I heard this, and it's like everything I think that the arcade fire's message was trying to be wrapped up in this one fucking song was my first thought. And I'm like, that's cool. It's already like. But like the thing, the thing is that there's, and that's just the message, right? There's there is like a cheekiness here that's that's missing, like. I, you keep comparing it to the arcade fire. I I don't hear it. No, no, no. I'm not, I'm not <laughs> talking about the sound of the, I, the I know, music. I know. It's just the lyrics. Just, just the lyrics. Even like there's there's like a sarcasm here. There's there's a cynicism here. Even even in, in an I'm yourself with love. Even in the vocal delivery, like you you can hear that he's being ridiculous. You know what I mean? Like they're being ridiculous. Like they they they, they fully believe it, but they're also putting forth exactly. like we know we're being cheesy right now. Here you go. Like 
and this I is think, the ultimate cheese. Like, so, but I also look at it from the sense of how sometimes in the mo- you'll find a lot of truth in satire and parody. Yeah. So it's almost like they're taking a South Park approach to speaking truth exactly. with their lyricism. Yeah. Right, and I love it because I do think, as you said, they they definitely believe what they're saying, and they are kind of having fun with it. Yeah. But because they're having fun with it, you let your guard down and get into it while you're letting positive messages get sucked into your brain. And I'm telling you, it's very rare that I listen to like albums for this show and the general feeling I have is just happiness and joy, you know? Yeah, like, like you can't not smile when this song comes on. I mean, this, like, and it's what? It's two minutes and 30 seconds less. And they do like, they've got, they've got like Appalachian style violins. They've got like big gospel harmonies. They've got fucking swing country happening. Like, and, and like it, there, there's like metal happening on like in two minutes and 30 seconds, they go through like five or six genres. And it's look, if you love Mr. Bungle, you will love this. If you love like Faith No More, you will love this okay. weird if fucking... You- like the general sound of old timey music, but find that it lacks a certain energy for your taste because you're into more heavier punk, faster shit. This takes all that old timey shit and puts that finishing touch on it. That makes it like, oh, it's so amazing. It's like I'm, my girlfriend loves a lot of this shit, right? Like just the fifties, forties music, and I'm like, ah, oh, slow and dreary. It's like that general tone. Like you can even swing dance to that shit. But like, and like, this, this even goes back to like, like the like app, like Appalachian, no, like, no, like I'm, Southern I'm, mountain music. Like, like this I'm goes my, back to like my knowledge of specific genres of music might be limited. Okay. But to me, it just sounds old timey, swing dancey, fun. It's old timey. And the way they put this metal heavy edge and tone, even even when it's not so metal, but this kind of fun tone to it that really just, ah, I'm, I'm fucking raving. This shit's obviously, uh, look, I give it a 4.5 just because it's cheesy. Okay, well, I gave it a 5 because they own the cheese. They do. I'm, I'm regretting it. You know what? Changing my grade. It's a 5. Like I, You know That's why? That's what I thought. Because... I don't do this a lot, but as I'm talking about it, it's like this is fucking an amazing song that made me feel really great, and it's all around goodness. And even if it's cheesy, it's delicious. You know? <laughs> okay, you're right. Five. I was wrong. Five. Okay, it's a five. Five. It doesn't happen a lot. I'm wrong. That's right. Internet. Let Chris Chrome know in another video that I was wrong once here. If you see this, or just don't tell him. It's the age of ultra culture. Hell's yeah. <laughs> So, like, um, this is a good song, too. I Olden was, hates the singer, and I love her. I don't hate the fucking singer. I, I felt like her. my only, my only, my only grievance with, like, this song is, I don't know if it's just stylistic interest or whatever, but there's a couple of parts where I feel like it sounded weird what she did. I didn't enjoy it as much as maybe other parts of the way she sings. So, like, depending on what was happening in the music, and it changes so much that a lot happens, sometimes I, I just the singing clashed to me patches here and there it's the only reason i don't think it's a perfect song uh, but it, otherwise it's fucking perfect like it goes from all these soft violins and gets super funky and shit and then just listen to the opening lines because keep in mind you're in this like positive you're bopping you're just almost like dancing and shit and then take all my honor and throw me away spit on me tell me i do not belong here haunt me and make me run for my life set my home on fire and burn it down to ash like it's it's dark but it's also really it's really grandiose like it really feels cinematic the whole thing feels very very cinematic and very theatrical in its delivery again i I, like uh, even like the opening it's got this big string section and it's not it's not the kind of thing where a lot of metal bands will just throw strings at the beginning of a track to sound ominous or whatever but they won't really put the work into it to make it to make it be like like an integral part of the song whereas this band puts the time and and develops the string sections and and nuances them and adds these subtleties them that make them just so, as catchy as the rest of the of the music on on this track i wasn't so astute to it but there's a couple where the music itself takes what the lyrics did previously and finishes the story for you yeah and it really does it well on this track there was just a lot of lyrics so the music took almost a lesser role except for the emotional tone now what this 
does is at every patch of music and almost every four to eight bars it's something new that gets introduced or yeah. they'll they'll go from like this really loud and everybody's involved down to like this very minimalistic super focused on the voice thing and then the next thing you know it's funky and smooth and yeah it's, it's fucking like, crazy like it goes like from metal to like gypsy jazz to yeah, like yeah. then you get this like really synthy synth led like really creepy section and then it gets really epic and like really ballady like so like I mean, from a lyrical point of view, I think it has a lot to do with the way that our culture just kind of jumps down everyone's throat and, like, attacks them online and stuff. Like, I feel like there's a heavy look at this internet use. So it's, like, lines like, you give me nothing more than just lies wrapped up in those beautiful words, haunt me and make me a fugitive searching for dignity, and they say you've got yourself to blame. And I'm just like, fuck, eh? That's some powerful ass shit, like like rape victims fucking being blamed type shit that's being conveyed through this super fucking poppy, happy, fucking great but, music. And and I don't think, like, I mean, if, if you really, like, I don't know, man, even the chorus and stuff has, like, I don't know. In general, I just feel like the, the lyrical tone is taking on such serious subject matter in a way where it tricks you into fucking thinking about it is where I'm trying to convey. <laughs> that That's what that's I think cool. they've become effectively good at. Like, I beg because of exclusion and dream a distant dream where insensibility is history. That's, like, the core of this song. Aww. And, like, when you listen to, like, because often what they'll do is they'll just have the hippy-dippy part where, like, that sentence is the entire lyrical tome. But here it's kind of putting out the harsh reality of almost, like, documenting how we're behaving. And I felt like this album kind of took a narrative of, like, as the songs went on, there was kind of a correlation to the tone of, like, the story of the album. I just had a lot of trouble catching all the lyrics enough to wrap my head around because there weren't lyrics posted yet for when we did this review and i found it a little bit challenging to hear it at a word per word level yeah but i felt like it moved me it made me think it was like really powerful and passionate and if i didn't have such a struggle with my like vocal conflict it would be a clear five but like the music the instrumentation the composition it's all fucking flawless man like there's no mistakes on that end of it for me but I did find that flaw, so four and a half on five, but it's amazing. I'm throwing this out there. Like, I, I, the, her voice was actually one of my favorite parts of this whole record. Uh, I just found I found it sexy. I found it powerful. I found that she could do a lot with it. Like, it was very malleable. Okay. Um, I, it, she really has that, like, that swing big band voice where, where you feel like she is, like, the band is accompanying her. You know what I mean? As much as they're doing, like, she is the volume. She is the... And I, I really love that. Um, and I'll just interject and say, I'm fucking ignorant to a lot of this older stuff, so it might just be a little bit of culture shock, and in six months, I'll be slapping myself for saying this shit on this review. And if that's the case, hardcore fans, I'm apologizing now in advance, and probably by the time I'm answering you in the comments, I've changed my mind. I mean, it's all it's all, it's all, all very subjective, right? But I mean, like... like the. I, I again I compared this to I specifically this song really reminded me of the Cat Empire, uh, and they also have two singers. They're both men, but like one is very clearly trained, and the other one is very clearly not. And and you know people have their their preferred singer in that right. band as well. Obviously, like um, well, that's fair. I mean, look, I'm just saying there's just parts of it, and it, it's just there's a lot happening. And once my brain can map out the sounds and stuff, I'm certain I'm going to hear it a lot clearer. And usually that's what happens after time. But yeah. it did just come out yesterday. So because I mean, like just the first two songs, the amount of genres that they hit on are like it's dizzying. There's so many styles, and like there's even like you can, there's like clearly Eastern European influence in there too. Like there's there's you can hear klezmer in there like. There's all uh, kinds of stuff. Like, I gave this song a straight five. It's it's truly fun. Um, and I guess if just to keep it going, the next one is called Superhero Jagannath. This is where I was. Everything he said came into full fruition for me. First of all, <laughs> fucking five point five. Fuck, it's so good. Five, but like, it's so good, man. Like. This track, it took me a minute to wrap my head around. So a Jagannath, for those of you who don't know, is means not a juggernaut. It's not, but it's similar. Similar, but, but not the same. But it's a lord of the universe. A, a juggernaut is like an indestructible force, you know? So similar. But um, one is the juggernaut, the other one is Thanos. And then I'm if you nerd. if you listen to like what the song's going on about, um, it's like lines like if people want to cage me like an animal, 
something, 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 show them my supremacy. That was my problem. There's a lot of something, somethings in there. Mm -hmm. And I got the sense of like, it presents this person who feels like suppressed in their ideas. They're not able to say some stuff, etc. And if you consider the previous track, The Age of Vulture Culture, and the fact that you should be arming yourselves with love. So it almost looks like an attack on the way we're going. Now that I'm thinking about it, the first track, as much as it's a true message, it's an attack on how people are doing this, going online in the name of love and fucking whatever and super hardcore extreme left types mixed in their combating stuff right. but like without really understanding right. the issues and or like the points that they're making it flows or... into like the age of vulture culture where you've got like this description of kind of you know what's happening uh, with this online platform yeah. and here it's almost from the perspective of the troll as we can call them where it's like you know what you realize you have this superpower on the internet you're like the lord of your own universe and shit now I might be wrong about how I interpreted this because I'm not really quoting a lot it was just the feeling but then if you the song progresses it does some interesting fucking things yeah. like it shows how there's this is a struggle attached to this right because like as he first embrace or she or whoever this character embraces it you get like the male vocalist coming in with these like monster sounds as the music gets heavier and like, harder re again really mike Patton, like ah! that kind of like, like you can almost can't picture right like now, but... the monsters under the bed as it's yeah. happening right and then it goes into like smoother tones where either way quicker aggressive and the music almost carries the story all the way up into like the end of the the track where yeah. it, it kind of like slows down where you get this sense of like this person went online caused a whole bunch of fucking havoc almost like troll trace or whatever from south park or right, skank right. Hunt 42 or whatever and like the whole thing right like that and then at a certain point you're like you're not like sense you're not left with this sense of like the person knows what they did but more like the sense of after their their rampage there's just like this calm like this calm after the storm of shit that's what i like, got from this journey and a lot of this is just me feeling this music and trying to guess the message a bit but holy fuck i had i was having so much fun bonnie gave me shit because i was dancing and it was too early in the morning and she was not happy and i was making noise but fuck i was having so i rarely like bjork was fun but it was more like a we reviewed bjork utopia and um it was like more like a movie. I was in awe. This, I was vibing. I was all, I was fucking straight Chris Chroming my feelings on this, you know? <laughs> like, holy shit. I don't know. Yeah. Your turn. No, it's, I mean, this, again, it's like, I haven't not given a five yet. So, spoiler alert, this is going to be a five. It's too good. Um, there's like this beautiful march section in the middle that like you think it's just like it's just these nice soft harmonies over this like marching snare beat and then it evolves and it gets it gets bigger and more epic and then it turns into this like fucking ugly industrial section with like the monster voices and then there's like like it, it goes into like choral music and then the outro is just like it's just fucking chaotic metal but like then, with like ska style horns and strings like it's so it's so it's so pretty it's like, so my it's favorite. It's one fucking hell of an experience. Yeah. Um, I get the feeling that maybe some of the older fans, because I did listen to it, their older music's a little more metal and heavy is what I got the feeling of. Might not, They might not like this album as much, but for anyone who's new and just wants some crazy experience, like it's a crazy fucking experience. So yeah. we're three songs in, and these, mean, these last two were long. And I, I, <laughs> look, I, I grew up listening to metal. Like I am a metalhead, and I, I went into this... Uh, I, yeah, I researched these guys a little bit before I before I listened to it, and I saw that they were a metal band, and I was like, okay. Oh, and apparently this this vocalist lady is a different one than the yeah. older one. Um, but the thing is now now at 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 the age I, I'm at and the number of metal albums that I've listened to, um, when I go into a metal album, I'm not excited anymore. I'm just like I'm I'm afraid of how much retread I'm gonna get. But there's no, I mean, look, it's not a heavy album, really. Like, there are some very crunchy riffs, but it's it's not really, like, you're not going here from, you're a, not coming I here from a metal I don't want to call it a metal album. It's not wanna, really a metal album. Wanna, you're coming here for a musical, like, it's it's an eclectic musical experience. It, it's kind of like a movie playing out in an album. It's one of those albums where, like, if you were washing dishes and you put this on, it's like, or you're in traffic and you put this on and you pick some other unpleasant motherfucking activity and you put this album on, You'll it do will it, be like, fun. That's it. You'll be and vibing. It's... You'll be like, ah, um, yes. I know it's not this song. It's just the first lyrics. As you're like washing or dry. Ah. So that's like, if you're looking for like, you want like the latest Five Finger Death Punch record or you want the, well, the latest like Iced out. Earth record, then 
yeah. hit that, but this and, isn't that. Like, and if this you're is... looking for like the super old school swing experience, it's kind of remixed into this cool. Ah, fuck it, we could go on for ages. Let's let's talk about Vision of the Purblind. I gave this song a 4.5 on 5 just because I can't give it a 5 just because I can't listen to it on its own just because it's not a song, it's just an interlude. Yeah, it, it's kind of a, a monotone kind of sound. Um, based on the title and the general feeling of it, you get the sense that it's trying to describe the tunnel vision nature of um, you know, our protagonist, as you can say, and how they've gone and caused this rampage, and then it's just they just see what they see and i i'm assuming that because of the title and the general sounds of pulsing and whatnot and then it just kind of it's a minute of that it's cool it's pleasant it's the kind of thing tool will do on a record because at this point i don't like this one there are other ones like this on this this one is just i guess it makes sense with the album on maybe you're not going to skip it but like i would never like i don't fully like I, I'll be honest. If I listen to the album a few more times, I might really come to appreciate it, its role on the album. But it's a generally unpleasant sound. Really, I, I, I really enjoyed it. Again, the only reason I wouldn't go back and listen to it on its own is because it's not a song. It's just an interlude. Like you're not gonna go back and listen to like, y- you know, pick an example. Yeah. Thanks. I appreciate that. All right. Let, let's just fucking go to the next one. We get it. Lady, uh, clandestine chain breaker person. But I know it's another possibility some of us can Me and again I had a bit of trouble with the lyrics on this one. Um because I find it super hard to hear it. Like I wanted to hear what she was saying, but there were so many high pitched sounds. And her voice is also high pitched. And yes. I can't uh, do the people uh, people's eyebrow on the other side. I, either way, I'm just saying like I found that there were parts of it where the, the higher pitched sounds kinda made it hard to make out what she was saying. Not that there's, it's not a saying a lack of talent or anything. It's it's actually really great. It does have all the same praise I would give it. But from a preference point of view, if I'm having trouble hearing what you're saying on your song for X, Y, Z reason, it totally makes me like it less because I have to kind of give up folk. It's like I have to make a choice now. Do I care about what the song is saying or do I want to hear the experience? Which means, yes, I guess I have to go back multiple times and absorb it. But... At the same time, I care, like, it's, it's harder for me to appreciate it when this happens. Not that it's bad, it's just a preference thing, for, and that's my rationale behind it. I mean, I'm, I'm going to go out and say this is the kind of record where you need to go back to each song anyway. Yeah, of course. If you want to get, the like, you're not going to get everything out of even the first three or four listens of any of these songs. Like, there's so much going but... on. There's so much. There's so many styles like to pick apart. See, it's it's not the the stylistic switches. It's literally my ability to decipher the lyrics depending on the stylistic choice and play at a given moment on the song. And I just, if it was more decipherable, and maybe it's just I'm not trained to, I haven't listened to enough of the music. Like the first time I heard mumble rap, it sounded like mumble rap. Now yeah. I don't really feel like it's mumbling at all. To me, it's super clear. And there is a degree of learning how to hear the nuances of the music, and I'm not there yet. Okay. So that's what I mean- I'm trying to establish. Like it's it's maybe not... It's maybe not the band's fault in any way. I'm saying I'm putting the whole blame on me being a little bit ignorant just to explain it and why my grade is a four and not a five. Because this song, what I did pick out was this amazing fucking message about how women kind of need to be like, should be free to express themselves emotionally without like, uh, fear of consequence and when you look at like even the title Lady Clandestine so the women have to operate in secrets and here we're going to be the chain breakers but then like in the middle of it you get this like what the this spoken word kind of bit it's almost kind of contextualizing the world as it is today right um, um, and then if you look at like how the music progresses it, it makes it clear that like there's this hope and this joy for the future but then there's also this upcoming battle that's going to happen and they're like what i like about this band is that they're aware that there is a battle that's going to happen and kind of priming you to give you the tools you need to get through it with this album is kind of where i'm at and this song is specifically targeting women who have been oppressed and put into a position where they don't have the voices and letting them know that in the perfect world, they're free to express themselves emotionally and shit. And she screams free a bunch of times and whatnot. And it, it fit beautifully. And then it just kind of ends in the tones of the song almost feel like an ode to war. Almost like like the battle's over and they've done it. They've, they've reached this fucking thing. They've broken the, the chain. And it just feels so triumphant and powerful and whatnot. It's a fucking groovy riff, man. 
it's a groovy riff and it jumps it jumps around adding beats just like willy nilly. It's the kind of thing that that Opeth would do, but with more horns. Um, so for you metalheads, if you're into that, the, the, the little metal right at the, right at the end of this track, it's fucking sweet, awesome riff. Um, it, it's a four. It, it's not my favorite song on this album, but it's an amazing song still for what it is, and it's stylistic preference, not a quality of music. Yeah, I mean, I I actually wrote that I her voice on this one to me was like sultry and smooth, but and again, just running through a, a bunch of different styles and a bunch of different changes, I didn't find that I specifically had trouble hearing what she was saying. I'm not usually paying attention on a first listen necessarily, like specifically to the lyrics, so I could be wrong. Um, but you know, it's not a complaint that, that I, it's a complaint that I've have had before that I didn't have on this one. Mm. I really like, you know, I haven't mentioned yet, you know, these are all five, five minute songs, but they don't feel like five minute songs. Nope. Cause again, there's so much going on that you're intrigued the whole way through. You're like, it, where is this going to go? Cause it, this one, again, it changes things up. It's got this like really poppy. Um, I almost felt like th- th- there's a part where the drums drop off. And, 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 you know, she's got that, that big lift uh, above, right. above a bunch of strings. And then it's almost like a bass drop. Like, I felt like they were almost reappropriating the modern pop song structure of, like, having um, the, the drums drop off at the pre-chorus and then having the beat drop and come back in. But in a very, like, swing, uh, gypsy jazz, um, vaudeville style. Like, there's um, such a consistency to the way these songs flow together that, like... Even though there's vast differences at a song to song level, it's the kind of vast differences you almost wish every band would do. Yeah. And they're doing it in a way where it's so different but fits Oops. They're doing it <laughs> they're doing it in a way that's so different but fits the puzzle so well that like you're just almost you're you you have no idea what the next song is going to sound like, but that's okay because you know you're not going to be disappointed. Is yeah. the feeling I'm at at this like my biggest issues is it's not my cup of tea, not that it's bad in any way. So that's an amazing feeling to have because I love the new experiences. And even if it's not my favorite sound, I still fucking think it's amazingly interesting music to listen to. And in terms of concept, like just just, just uh, what you were talking about, about how you interpreted the lyrics, there's a band called Protest the Hero mm, uh, who I are also them. a progressive metal band. Um, they have a song called Turn Soon Is To The Sea, which is very, very similar, um, not necessarily structurally, but... But um, ideologically, uh, they have a, there's a spoken word section in the middle of that song that goes. Um, so as you fl- as you lay on the bed, as you fed those expecto- as you fed those expectations as a whore, not a human, you embrace with hesitation the very parameters of all you could be: not a mother, not a sister, not an aunt who's not subdued, because dignity is not physical and your flesh means more than you. And it's you know this song came out ten years ago, but it's another it's another woman's right anthem. But like it's very similar in in, in delivery. I uh, love how they just have this lady dominating the vocals on this. Yeah. Album. I'm like, he's not there a lot. Like, it's more about her story almost, you know? And it's cool because I actually, his songs, I was a little less, except for uh, Arm Yourself with with, with yeah, Love. Yeah, like the his monster voices, the way he complimented was cool. But so far, I'm really happy that she, like, she with the tone the main... and stuff. I don't know. Anyway, you want to? Wanna... I gave this one a five. Sorry, I didn't. No, it's cool. Well, you kind of established, I think. Anyway, Jigsaw Fives Hustle. Again. Jigsaw Hustle is the next one. There's a clear 80s, you know, influence on this track and like dancey feeling. I would have said even 70s, very Shh. disco. Right, and I think it's an interesting choice because of what the subject matter of the song is describing and how the, the this protagonist person is kind of taking this deceitful, two-faced, almost rise to the top, right? Like they're just kind of being duplicitous, and and it, it, it's like. As they're there, they're seeing how the people have like turned on them, and, and things are all kind of bad and whatnot. Because you know, I mean, this is what I'm interpreting. I might be a little bit wrong, but uh, and it's interesting because if you look at the the course of musical integrity, this the era they're ripping off is a good era for when that kind of flipping mentality started to really become the prominent deciding factor in what would become popular music and whatnot. Right. So at a very meta level, I thought it was one of the most impressive choices of things they could have done on this album. It, it blew me out when I like, clicked. I was like, oh, fuck. I couldn't help but wonder if they were actually referencing Jigsaw, like from Saw. Maybe. Because he is kind of like that, that symbol of like 
take like sh- sh- teaching people lessons i guess teaching... and then if you want to take that one step further it's also the perfect example of something that should have died that never did and it's just <laughs> existing for fucking money there's and... still there's another saw movie coming out eh yes there's or a, it there's just came out another one and i, I think he didn't he die in the th- god i stopped watching after the third anyway, one it, the first saw movie is amazing i'd say the first three I'll give it to them. The first two are incredible. I the hated thir- the third one. Ah, like the third one's okay if you're into it. You know, you know what it is? Because the first two... I'm sorry, we're not talking about this record anymore just for a second. The first two... <laughs> I Like, the Hold twists on. were where amazing. Did you fall off saw? Where did Let you it, fall off Saw? Like, where did because you fall off Saw? Because the first two I loved because of the twist. Well, like, yeah. the acting was great. The story was great. The fact in the first one that there was minimal gore and it was still a horror movie yeah, was but great. Like, first the one third was one, like... I, thought, I saw the twist coming. I didn't even realize that that was supposed to be a twist. I was like, they're married. I know this. And then at the end, it's like, they're actually husband and wife. And I was like, okay. Yeah, but, but, it's, I, but it's at that point, when you're watching the third one, um, it's kind of like you're basically expecting what you're going to get out of it, but you're watching it because you enjoy it. Now, when we're talking about the seventh one, oh, they're not the even... Seventh one. I, 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 I think I've seen the fifth or sixth one, but they just stop fucking trying to be creative with it. Not like... Diablo Swing Orchestra, who is so creative with this song that somehow this conversation started off of the title and the meta themes of this fucking track, just showing they're really good at what they do. Um, ultimately, also a really good movie. I really love the lyrics. Uh, Two faced eyes, there's nothing that can keep me from my prize. Glory days, though come and gone, and you'll be left to mourn what you have found. And it's like, man, they're just painting this picture that, like, if you don't take, like, the, like it's kind of a cautionary tale. Like, if you do this thing, this, this like, quick money type fucking whatever consequence, it's kind of like what hip hop says, where, like, in the street life will take you out. If, you know, there's no positive ending to that world, but just showing another path to destruction like that while, again, doing all this positive, awesome fucking music shit. Honestly, you just want to dance to this song. Like, I'm not even a dancer type, and I just want to dance to this shit. It's so fucking I'm also going to throw this out there and say this is this song is like a mosh pit rager. Like, there's some really tasty fucking riffs going on here. Um, I'm going to give it a 4.5. It's not 100% my cup of tea, but it's fucking cool. Guess what I'm going to give it? 5. No. Um, I actually did not give this one a 5. I didn't oh. give it a 4.5 either. I don't like disco. So that's, you know, and it, that's that's a very personal thing. And I, I couldn't, like, the strings were catchy and it was well done, but I that's a level of cheese that I, I'm i just not ready. And I, I love funk, and I know that's hypocritical because, you know, disco and funk, same fucking thing. But I, I, I just, I couldn't handle the intro. The rest of the song I really liked, except I found the chorus. It just wasn't, it, it didn't do for me what most of the other uh passages have have done on this record like it was it was just a little it fell a little bit flat but that's in context of this record right like it's still an amazing song i gave it a 4.85 okay on five all right um, so i'm introducing a new grade that's fine we can go as specific as we want and we can keep ourselves with the pulse of the incipient Like, there's no point in really reviewing this track, but I know Holden's going to make us review this track, so I gave it a 6 on 5. Asshole. <laughs> um, so it's got, like, this uh, pulsing sound, like a heartbeat. There's some baby crying. And incipient reflect, uh, means, like, new beginnings or something along those lines, the start of something new. So with the baby crying and the pulse, it's almost like if you're looking at it, Jigsaw Hustle has us at the end of an empire, like the capitalist era has been destroyed or blah, 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 kind of on a grand level. And then this is saying it's the dawn of something fucking new, which is an interesting thematic way to move the story along meaning there was totally a fucking point of talking about this. I thought there was more to it than the last one, and I gave it a four. Anyway, oh, let's shit. have an ode to the innocent. Lost and found here. Ode to the innocent? Okay. Yeah, my least favorite song on the album, mostly because, it, look, it, it doesn't have the same life and energy and whatnot in it, and it does have a great point to it. Um, It's like, I, I find the violin... And her shrill voice, not good friends on multiple points in this song that made it unpleasant for me. 
And again, that's just what I feel. It, it's not like it's not talented. In fact, I think from a talent perspective, I am seeing true masters of their craft dropping stuff that's far beyond what I could ever hope to achieve as an artist. On the other hand, I didn't like it that much. And that's just nitpicking, right? Um, it's slower, it's sadder. It kind of gives you this, this like feeling of wanting more out of life while simultaneously feeling super insignificant, which is kind of like if you look at like the current state of affairs in the world, it makes total sense. We've called for the change and the destruction of everything out there, and now we're all kind of sitting there and missing our innocence because we don't know what the fuck to do next, and we all feel useless. And that's a fair assessment of how people are these days. I'm loving the message. I, I just, whatever. It's a three and a half on five to me. It's a super talented song. It's three minutes and 49 seconds. It's shorter, and I'm kind of happy it didn't go on for five minutes because that would have it would have not been fun for me. Yeah, um... I actually, this this one was also probably my least favorite, just because I felt like they, 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 they changed their approach a little bit on this one, like where on most of the other tracks they're like reinterpreting older styles of jazz and jazz fusion, um, and this one they're more paying tribute to like gypsy jazz and, 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 and that, that, that kind of, you know, um, 30s, 40s kind of um jazz jazz sound um and i wasn't i wasn't as enthused by it like i wasn't as interested by it. maybe maybe it's a lack of percussion maybe i'm being maybe i'm being a, yeah. a little bit too subjective here um i still gave it a 4.5 and that is higher than the, a higher grade than one that i gave to, to to come um but i did like that song better and i'll, I'll get into that when that song uh shows up but i mean I, I again I, I I loved her voice on this one I thought I thought she played the she played up the the the, the very not necessarily whiny but um, s sensitive I guess um, like it's an ode right so right. so you expect a kind of kind of uh... yeah like I can get it personally I get what you're saying like it is everything it's supposed to be I just Look, when you cut, you they hooked me with some high energy shit, and I just wasn't expecting. The, I mean, it, it fits. It's a good part of the album to do it. It's right after a transitionary interlude, and so none of it like is is it's like logistically everything makes sense about this song, except for the part where I don't really want to listen to it again. <laughs> it's just, it's a, it's a departure from like really weird to like a little bit more normal, I guess. Which is like I think I would have preferred if they'd stayed really weird. There. Um. So so, so that's my thing. Anyway, you know it's a uh, more interesting interruption. Song? Yeah, that that thing. Hey, I do want to point out. Correct me if I'm wrong here, somebody, but I don't think there are any guitars on this record. I think all of the distorted string sounds come from a distorted cello. Um, I could be wrong here. So yeah, I don't know personally. I thought it was okay. Um. I dug the message and the feel of this song a lot. It took me a minute to like really wrap my head around it. So she's talking kind of about interruptions, but she presents them as like this positive thing. She presents them as like this chaotically negative thing. And then I started, you know, considering the music as a way of telling the story for real, right? Mm -hmm. And I'm pretty pretty sure this is just the tale of addiction. It is what this song really like breaks down to, like. You're on your course, you're doing what you think is proper, your life is on its like set thing, and then you encounter something new, whether it be drugs or promiscuity or Call of Duty or whatever your drug of choice is, and this shit makes you feel proper and alive, and it kind of helps you break the monotony of the day-to-day -day and the boring-ass routines and stuff. And then the music gets more chaotic and more calm as like the different experiences are happening. And if you consider any journey through these types of things, there's often patches where it's awful and there's patches where it's amazing and etc and it just kind of ends in this point where it just everything feels like almost used and spent and whatnot and i'm like fuck they're effective musical storytellers and shit and um i gave it a four on five because again this this little chunk of the album isn't really my favorite sounds that they put on these last two songs here okay it's it's like it's not that it's not talented. It's just a little bit veered away from my interest level of what like was super exciting for me earlier. And on the one hand, I love the fact that it's still, again, completely new. It's completely distinct. So I'm praising it in the sense of recognizing its brilliance and its placement. I love the story and the message of how it came out. It's just 
like you know you know when you got to be like in a particular mood to hear a song whereas other ones will bring you there and to me that's often a, a big thing that helps me play into whether or not i consider it a perfect song this one i have to be in a mood for whereas something like you know the earlier songs bring you somewhere and so in the context of this album it's brilliant and i give it a four it's an amazingly composed song but on its own i don't like it as much i think this one is my favorite one yet um, <laughs> I really, really, really enjoyed, um, the, just the switch from, like, the really heavy riff to, like, the really, like, smoky piano bar jazz, um, and then to, like, pop in the second verse. I, I really, really liked it. I, it all, it all works. Like, it's just another example of how well they can bring in these disparate genres and, okay. and really sew them together and make, make a solid song out of it. Whereas other, you know, a lot of other bands will try this, but they'll kind of fall flat on the transition. Whereas these guys really, really nail that. Um, I, I was wrong, by the way, that there, there is guitar. I, I even said that I liked a guitar like earlier, earlier on on the record, but there's also a lot of distorted cello and that's really cool. Uh, it's something that like Apocalyptica does. Yeah. Um, I, I didn't know if I was listening to them this week. They're good, but I think these guys do it better. I think um, these guys have more flair and interestingness to yes. them. Yes. Um, look, I like Apocalyptica when they're covering Metallica. I actually like Corey Apocalyptica Taylor. more when they're not covering Metallica. Again, when they're featuring Corey Taylor. Also. No, I mean, I went back to their first uh, no, album. Jesus. And it, no, really, maybe we should even review it one day in the future once we're doing all their albums, but that first Apocalyptica album is fucking magical. It's compared. not just a Metallica cover album? No, no, no. I'm pretty sure. No, no, no. That's like okay. their fourth one or something, or later yeah. on. They okay. have an album that's just Metallica covers, but their original music is fucking blessed, and you should check it out. Anyway, five on five. Cold de sac semantics is all we're just doing here, you know. Yeah. That it's actually Apocalyptica's third album. I was describing as being fucking great with the original music and shit. Still has covers of Until It Sleeps. Okay, and, and fight fire with fire. Fight I, fire with fire. I digress. Burning with um, fear. Cul-de-sac uh, semantics has a more waltzy, uppy kind of. It almost gives like this sense of like this classy, higher end feel of some of the other policy things that we've heard. Um, it's an interlude. It's well made. It has an interesting experience to it. And ultimately, I'm gonna give this track a four on five because it does everything it's supposed to do as as far as the interludes on this album go. I also gave this one a four on five. Um, this one really just felt like it was a because we can type mm -hmm. of moment. Like it didn't. I didn't. I really didn't feel like this one. Like I liked it. It was funny. It reminded me too much of the opening scene in Team America, right. like that kind of like spoofing France or spoofing Paris. Um, so I, you know, it lost a little points. It lost a couple points for that. I like. I enjoyed it. It's just not as, you know, the, the other the other interludes were much more abstract, and I felt like fit the album better um, just because of that, whereas this one is really in-your-face, very Parisian street music, and I was like, oh, okay, like, fine. But, again, very well composed and, and, and cool, I guess. It was, just, it was a little too much cheese and a little a little too much on-the-nose no satire, I guess, for me. So, yeah. All right. Or... Karma Bonfire. Let go. Let go. This one was so fucking fun, man. We got out of everything that I loved about it came right back in. And I was vibing and I was flowing and everything. And I had a different problem. I loved the music so much I couldn't listen to the words. I, I kept trying to like listen to the words, but then I just kept getting taken away by how amazing this music is. You got like the perfect blend of like the airy fun high end of the music while the whole lower end of the spectrum is this aggressive fucking punchiness and i got the feeling the song's a little bit about like blatant disregard of like whatever okay but i just got a feeling i can't really defend this one or, or like really do the normal level of lyrical breakdown i would what i can tell you is the music and the fucking feel of this track the way it explodes the way after it's cause like you've been through this darker kind of drearier patch for a while and it just fucking, fucking explodes with like energy for the first time in like you know four actual tracks if you include the skits and whatnot right and that was amazing i'm right back up there with the happy feelings the vibing around uh, the, the the insanity um this track is a four and a half on five to me it's really amazing it's really great 
But considering how much I liked a couple of the other ones, comparing against them, I don't like this one as much. But within the realms of this against normal music, there's no comparison. This is a fucking experience. And this experience is totally worth having. And yeah, when I don't look at the lyrics, it's harder to talk. So <laughs> that's, I mean, that's very similar to how I felt. This, this is the song that I was talking about when I said, like, I like this one more than the one I gave a four and a half to. But I gave this one a four just because, like, it, it's very fun and it's 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 super catchy and it's super like yeah, like great. But it just it feels a little more standard song songwriting than any of the other songs on this record. Right. And just in context here again, that's that's something that you know I'm I'm I want a little less from these guys now, <laughs> just because I've heard so much crazy stuff. That you, you go back to like a standard rock song, and this isn't even really a standard rock song because it's still like a cut above uh, a lot of a lot of other rock and metal bands, a lot of what they're doing. But it's 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 just it's not it's not it doesn't scratch that that itch the same way some of the other the other songs mm. uh, scratch it. Even though I really I really do enjoy I really do enjoy it, you know, on its own merits. So I gave it a four on five just because of that. All right, that's cool. Um, one more real song left. Yeah, climbing the eye wall. Climbing the eye wall. More music storytelling mixed with lyrics. Um, you get the sense that she's with this broken relationship dude who's maybe not the best thing for her, but she feels the sense she can't leave this person. I think that's literally one of the lyrics. Again, it was a little hard with, with to hear them, but not in a bad way. The music's really good on this one too, so it was yeah. like pretty fucking sucking me in. And it was telling the story a lot, so there, there's a lot to absorb. But you get the sense that it's kind of broken, but she's there for him. She deals with his situations and stuff. But then at a certain point, it's like the lyrics just kind of stop a bit. And the music takes over for a while to like kind of create this chaos. And it's like yeah. you can tell bad things are happening, but nothing's being said. It's just the music putting these pictures into your brain. And then like a bit more lyrics and you almost feel like shit's not as good, but like there's still the need for it. And then it just kind of plays out music that makes you feel almost turmoil and awful. And it just kind of like ends. And it's like, fuck, eh? Another crazy experience on this one. Music is really different. It almost has like this, like I felt like there was almost like hip hop in the drums. I found myself bopping a little more like this to it than I have on any other song on this album, which is cool. I love the fact that they've gone through this whole fucking thing and managed to make every song a distinct and unique experience. And for yeah. me, that's fucking magical. Everything still kind of fits the album, so that's also kind of magical. And uh, it's not my favorite song. Um, I kind of would have liked a little more thump and energy for this like last experience, like a little more Saza, I okay. guess, because like, they've proven that they're a lot about that. And I feel like we started with a high level at Tzitzaz or whatever, and then we've kind of slowed down a lot as this album's gone on, which is a way to approach it. I just, it's not my favorite way in my, my personal view of it all. However, the song is still fucking stellar in composition and experience, but I give it a four. Um, I actually, I, I enjoy this one a lot, like a lot. I, I love the really foreboding, almost medieval um uh way way they introduce it. I, I I know the, the the drums do feel very hip hop but it also feels very very country very old western okay. um kind of like you, you picture Clint Eastwood uh you know slowly marching in the desert towards like another gunman or whatever um and then a, a, a very another very open section uh that closes out the song um a very riffy very 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 heavy it starts at about 3 minutes and 30 seconds and I I love it I gave this one a five on five. I thought it was a perfect closer, uh, and then I thought I also thought the real closer was a perfect closer. So let's get to that one. Porcha perception. Yeah. A good use of a fade out. You, you know what it reminded me of? <laughs> no. Do you, do you ever watch Friends? Yes. Okay. You know when Ross pulls out his keyboard, okay, and every single one of his uh, pieces or whatever ends with him going. And he goes, <laughs> like, but in the in the best way possible. I I loved this outro because it, it really called back like the, the the Appalachian country feel of the first track. And you're, so I thought it was a really nice and, bookend. And, and you're like sitting there and you just picturing someone. There's cows mooing. You, yeah. You picture the porch. You picture the porch. You picture and the guy playing his banjo. Something like. something about like I, I was watching a, a video. I think it's from the Vox series Earworm, which is totally worth checking out if you like music related content. Um, 
but they were kind of describing just the art of the fade out and how studies have shown that when a fade out is executed properly it's almost like the experience of the song transcends the length of the song so the song will actually end but in your brain in your experience for another couple of seconds you're still with it yeah and when you listen to this fade out you don't know exactly you can hear it getting quieter and quieter at a really good pace and you just had this high energy insane experience and and i really found myself like it, it ends and only a couple of seconds later am I like, oh, wait, right, right. You know, like you, you're you're still there. And, and as far as an outro goes, I believe that that is possibly the best and most effective experience to have at the very last seconds. And that alone is amazing. And you know what else I love that they did? They had the only really dark, the only really, really dark song was, was the last real song. Mm. And then it's, it comes back to this really bright and happy and sunny feeling. And, and yeah, I give it a four. I give it a five. Um, it's not my favorite, and I found it very like like. Okay, look, I mean, it was really just like I wouldn't I wouldn't go back and listen to it again. It's hard to give it a perfect five, but objectively speaking, you know, what, four and a half. It's really clever, and the more I think I like about how it, it made you bump your grade I up know, twice now. Because this album's hard for me to review. It's very out of my like experience, and when I start thinking about it more and more about what impresses me, it's like my grade is very subjective. And then I start being more objective. Anyway, um, let's talk about the album real quick. This is one, for those of you who just got here, because I, I realize a few of you do this, um, this album is fucking next level in terms of being an experience. Like, if, if you, even if you don't like it per se, and it's not your cup of tea, you're going to want to listen to it A to Z. You're going to be kind of enthralled, and you're going to get into it, and you're going to find some value, because within the same song, you're going to find five shoutouts to different things, and yeah. that's incredible. Um it lives up to its name of, of being hard, Diablo, swing, swing music, orchestra, orchestral shit, fusing it together proper and doing it right. Um, the vision behind this album, the consistency, it makes the name Pacifistic Cuffs actually kind of makes a lot of sense having heard the album and its content. Like it really is a great name for this project that sums it up proper without being some cheeky title track type shit. It's like the mantra of it. Um, I'm gonna give the album a 4.3 on five. It's it's not that the talent of the music isn't there. It's just there's too many parts where my preference isn't there. And at the end of the day, there are albums I like more than this. There are albums I think are better than this that I got in higher marks and I couldn't give this more than a 4.3. I mean, this very well may be so, so far my favorite album of the year. Wow. Um, it, top two, probably. Uh, I haven't heard an album yet that is really scratched all the itches I want scratched from an album in the way this one does but that's again very personal if you're a fan like me of bands like the Cat Empire like Faith No More like 12 Foot Ninja like Mr. Bungle like really really eclectic weird out there music and bands that really take genres from really disparate places time periods and just fit them all into one song if you like that you will really like this record if you don't this is going to leave you scratching your head um, but one way or another, it's one hell of an interesting. It's one experience. hell of a listen. I, I think I probably it probably all adds up to a, like a four point seven on five, which I think is the highest grade that I've given so far. Yeah, it's um, very close to my highest one given. Yeah, so I mean, I'm I'm definitely gonna go back and check out their discography. I'm fascinated hold, by this band now. I want to point it out that I like what I've heard of their older work more than I like this album. Uh, so I am one hundred percent not done with this band. I think the album prior to this was better. From what I understand, the From older work is, is heavier. So for those of you looking yeah. for a more metal-oriented record, so, you probably want to start, you know, earlier like, on in their discography. My boss was going on about how much he loved their first album and shit. He's like an older metalhead guy, early yeah. 40s type. So, like, I really feel like disc by disc, you'd probably find some different shit along the way, and it, it's truly magnificent. But, um, but of, I do want to say that, you know, we, we review a lot of albums here, and this is one of the only ones that like this is the way an album is supposed to be structured like okay. it's got it's got the interludes and it really plays out like a full theatrical really cinematic piece of art whereas a lot of other albums are just collections of songs and i feel like a lot of bands really miss the mark so if you're looking to 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 find a really good example of of how to structure an album like i i would use this one as a really solid example of that fair enough excellent point Thank yeah. you all for watching this episode of the Rock and Beards podcast. 
That's right, episode fucking 40. That's cool. Um, Not really, like that last time that we said it was episode 40, but it was actually like 31 or something. Or 20-something. <laughs> um, we made it! Or whatever. Uh, appreciate y'all. Without you, there's no show. Without your interactions, it's boring. Your comments are the best part. And remember, if you comment, like, and subscribe, you're in the contest to maybe win some Amazon money because we want to hit that thousand subscriber mark as fast as possible. Amazon possible. money! Woo -hoo. Amazon's a beautiful thing, man. Yeah. I used to, that Amazon Prime, great $80 of my life. It's paid for so much shit in this room, even. Um end of the day we like you all let us know what albums you care about that are coming out in the future if you want to see more of the weird shit if you want to see some mainstream shit we'll probably do more of the weird shit anyway because you guys seem to like it more and look forward to seeing you the next time and all of that fun shit so we're gonna go take a little break and then record another